Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm glad that you joined us today. It's going to be a great show. Dr. Brian Lubers from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University is going to join us today. We're going to talk about what a valid veterinary client patient relationship is and how you can utilize your veterinary. Thanks for joining the show. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey folks, welcome to the show. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's a pleasure to have you all here. This is Dr. Brian Lubers, and Brian is the Director of Microbiology at the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory here in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And, and Brian, we get to talking about some of these things, and, and you're boarded in pharmacology, mm -hmm. and, and we start talking about the, the things coming down the road as far as antibiotics, drugs, usage, uh, on-farm, uh, recommendations people really need to be working with their veterinarian and getting their veterinarian on the farm and that starts by having a valid veterinary client patient relationship yep that's right and I think it's important to remember too that this is actually in the federal regulations this this is not um, something that just the veterinary profession decided we needed to do this this is an important part of antibiotic use and prescribing uh, from the federal side too you bet and, and you know it's it's we, we've gotten a little bit of a different situation with the rural practitioner and being spread out, but really when it comes down to judicious antibiotic usage, there's no difference between a pediatrician and, and a child prescribing and a veterinarian prescribing for, for, for cattle. Absolutely not. We, you know, in both of those instances, we're relying on a trained professional with scientific knowledge to really make appropriate medical recommendations. Very yeah. similar. And it's a huge responsibility for the veterinary profession. It is. I mean, it is. Yep. It's, when you start to think about antibiotic resistance and the things that we're talking about, that's being laid at the feet now and the responsibility and the accountability to that practicing veterinarian. Yep. Absolutely. So let's get down to what is a, a veterinary client patient relationship? A veterinary client patient relationship, and, and that's the spirit of it, right? It's a relationship between those three parties, the veterinarian, the client, the, the livestock producer, and then the client's animals, which is the veterinarian's patient. And so when we look at veterinary client patient relationships and the regulations, there are four conditions that they've laid out to have a valid veterinary client patient relationship. Uh, the first is that the veterinarian has assumed making all the medical decisions for that producer and those patients. The second is that the client has agreed to follow those instructions. So whatever the veterinarian recommends, the, the client has to follow that. The veterinarian has to have enough knowledge of those animals and that operation to make appropriate medical decisions. And so the, the guidelines don't specify a number of visits or time frame, but they do say that the veterinarian has to have a physical presence on that farm. And then the last one is that the veterinarian is readily available for follow-up in case of bad drug reactions or things aren't working as they expected to. So really it's, it's you know, the veterinarian's got to be able to get, be on the farm, mm -hmm. has to have working knowledge of the, the herd, mm -hmm. and, and you get back to the, the place where the, the producer is agreeing. That relationship isn't one-sided. Right. Oh, absolutely not. No, it, it is a veterinary client patient relationship. So there, so everybody is, is involved with that. Yep. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, let's start to tease down through these four uh, conditions and we can start to, to discuss a little bit about how we build that relationship. Sure. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Brian Lubers from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. 
Tyson Beyer, a student at the University of Saskatchewan, recently received an Amstut scholarship. As a fourth generation rancher raised on a cow calf operation, Tyson grew up in the cattle business and it was natural for him to pursue an education in bovine medicine. After graduation, he plans to work in a large animal practice, then move into bovine reproductive technologies. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Lubers, where he is the Director of Microbiology at the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory here in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're talking about something that really is important for producers and veterinarians to, to understand and, and to adhere to, and that's a veterinary client-patient relationship. And as we discussed during the break, Brian, you know, there, there, are, there are verbal and, and written VCPRs. Right. It, and I think, it, you know, it's, it's really up to the veterinarian and the client what they're comfortable with to decide is a verbal agreement enough or do we, do we want something in writing. Uh, it's not specified, it's not required to have either or form, but it's important that both parties agree this is the way we want to proceed. And as we're moving forward in some of these farm assessments like beef quality assurance assessments and the farm assessment for dairy uh, and PQA plus for, for swine, we're in those programs they actually require a signed veterinary client patient relationship mm -hmm. you know that the veterinarian has said I'm on the farm we have a relationship and and the producer saying I'm I'm going to hear the protocols of doctor XYZ right. and and so it is becoming a lot more formal but uh, so talk to me a little bit about you know the difference in farm size and and you know how that plays into like a written versus a verbal sure and, and I think probably the the underlying point is is that these are federal regulations but they were built with enough flexibility to try to tailor to to every situation out there so you have a a small cow calf operation that doesn't have a lot of change in the operation they're they're pretty consistent they're not bringing in new animals uh, their veterinarian they, they have one veterinarian that they work with that veterinarian prescribes all their drugs, that veterinarian writes their treatment protocols, uh, maybe designs their vaccination protocols, all of that. You know, that's a, that's a pretty intimate relationship and everybody probably understands that I'm your veterinarian and you're my client and we are in a VCPR. Um, and maybe, you know, one or two visits a year is enough for me to come out and really feel like I know your operation and what's going on with those animals. You know, on the flip side, we have a a very large dairy or stalker operation or feed yard with new animals coming in a lot. Uh, the, the situation for that particular operation is changing pretty frequently. Uh, maybe there are multiple veterinarians involved, so there might be a primary veterinarian and then maybe a consultant on, on top of that. Uh, it's probably more important in that situation to have a, a more formal agreement in place to, to really define whose role is, is what. And it keeps everybody on the same page. Sure, absolutely. It keeps everybody on the same page. One of the things when we were going down through there was time frame is not specified as far as number of visits, you know, and, and you say that that could be dependent on the type of operation and, and sure. as well. Yeah, and, and again, it's all about flexibility to tailor to every operation out there. And so, um, but at the end of the day, really, it's what is that veterinarian and what is that client comfortable with uh, the veterinarian has to feel like he has enough knowledge of the situation at, at any given time and the client really benefits the client too if the veterinarian is what knows what's going on on their farm. So. Yep. Well, we're going to take a break, folks. Uh, this is Dr. Brian Lubers. He is the Director of Microbiology at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about drug use, veterinary client-patient relationship, and following some of the rules and guidelines. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and we'll be back right after these messages.
The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello, folks. This is Dr. Nels Lindberg with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. Today, we want to give your BQA Tip of the Day on bedding, which gives us good cattle comfort, animal welfare, as well as insulation, whether it be in the wintertime or in the summertime. In a dry lot situation, whether it's in a feed yard or a cow calf situation, stalker, whatever it may be, we may be on a, a dry lot situation. We want to give them adequate bedding to give them good cattle comfort, as well as insulation to prevent heat stress, as well as cold stress in the summertime or the wintertime. It's extremely important that we give them all the comfort we can give them to produce a safe product. We also want to work very hard at managing this bedding. Bedding can get dirty, as you know. We need to get in, scrape it, clean it, put out new fresh bedding as needed to provide a clean source and a healthy environment. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Brian Lubers. He is from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, where he serves as the Director of Microbiology, and he is a boarded pharm pharmacologist, which means that He's a veterinarian that deals a lot with bugs and drugs. Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> and so, talk to us. We've been talking about the veterinary client patient relationship. You know, why do we need to have the veterinary client patient relationship? Because I, I hear a producer saying, well, I don't need a vet out of my place. Or I hear, you know, the, 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 some people have a veterinary, very good relationship with their veterinarian, and some people say, I, I don't need one. And so why do we have to have this veterinary client-patient relationship? Sure. So the veterinary client-patient relationship was originally defined for a couple of specific reasons. And, and the first one was prescribing drugs. So any prescription drug, you have to be in that relationship. Very similar to your example earlier about the pediatrician. You know, it's very similar. Um, anytime an, an antibiotic 
is used extra labelly, so that means anything that's not on, so if it's used for a different animal species, a different disease, a different dose, any of those things, there has to be a veterinarian involved with a valid veterinary client patient relationship. So that, that was kind of the original reasons for having the VCPR. Okay. And, and you know, there are some drugs that are over the counter and, and things to that nature, but, but even some of that is changing as far as in the feed and, and things sure. as, as we're moving forward. And so that VCPR is going to be important even for some of the things that, that used to be non yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, and that's why we're seeing a refocus back on the on the valid the definition of valid veterinary client patient relationship because there are new regulations that are currently going into place uh, by December of 2016 those will be finalized and will be in effect and a lot of those regulations the the keystone of that is veterinary oversight and and really that's another just another way of saying having a vet valid veterinary client patient relationship. Okay. So so talk to me a little bit about, you know, because I think that it it I think that the producer ha it, it has taken a drift to not understanding that the veterinarian and having that veterinarian on farm whether it's for a herd health check or to establish that VCPR to establish your treatment protocols is is really protects the producer. Absolutely. I, I know from when I was in practice, and certainly, you know, there's, there's all kinds across the spectrum, but I think if you're, if you're in a situation where you view, view the veterinarian as another expense line in the farm budget, um, I, I think when a valid veterinary client-patient relationship is done correctly, there should be mutual benefit across the board, and it, and it starts with animal health and welfare, but generally those things spill over into productivity. And, ve and veterinarians are trained to do all of those things, right? We're, we're trained to correct animal health issues, but we're also trained to maximize productivity. And so I think having that relationship should be beneficial to everybody involved. Absolutely. We, I don't know how many hours we spend either giving or taking continuing education credits, but our job is to also kind of serve as that sounding board of bringing the new technology, the new production practices to the farm. And, and so work with your local veterinarian, get them out to the farm and uh, utilize that veterinary client patient relationship because your livelihood and your farm's livelihood depends upon it. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Brian Lubers talking about the valid veterinary client patient relationship. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Be sure to join me next week as we'll have a special guest from the University of Wisconsin, Dr. Dorte Dopfer, and we're going to talk about digital dermatitis, otherwise known as hair heel work, in feeder cattle. It's something that happens more common than we think, and it's something we're going to talk about how you can identify if it's in your herd. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotating cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. And I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. A high-energy, drought-tolerant crop, sorghum only requires six inches of water to produce the first bushel. And with its wide uses and easy adaptation, sorghum proves to be a truly indispensable crop. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. 
Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. This is our final segment with Dr. Brian Lubers on the topic of veterinary client patient relationships. But really, what we're talking about when we moved into this veterinary client patient relationship is, is we're talking about stewardship of antibiotics. And, and what I mean by that is we need to really be stewards of these technologies so that we can have them be effective. Sure. I heard down there at the CDC where you and I were on a program and they said that we're entering a time where because of resistance to antibiotics in, in humans that we could be going back to a time where people are dying from the simple infections that they had before we had antibiotics. Yeah. We, we talk about the post-antibiotic era and another thing too that I don't think probably gets enough attention is we have problems with antibiotic resistance in veterinary medicine too. Big time. We, we, I know from our lab, we track those things and we are seeing some increases in resist, antibiotic resistance. So the antibiotics don't work to some bacteria that are pretty important in veterinary medicine too. Yeah, so, so talk to me then about why, I mean, we, we, we've established this veterinary client patient relationship, but, but really the veterinarian and the producer have a, a a responsibility to society and a responsibility to to the animals of getting this right. Right. I, yeah, and, and that's what, you know, the deeper that that VCPR relationship goes, the, the more you get into those kinds of things. And so I think, you know, that's why it's, we can never emphasize too much having that relationship. But, you know, the short version of that answer, Dan, is if we're trying to maximize the efficacy the ability of our antibiotics to work and minimize the development of resistance, really we've got three things we need to do. Okay. We look for alternatives to antibiotics whenever they're effective, so not using them is always a good first step. Yep. When we need to use antibiotics, we use them at the right dose for the right time to, to maximize the efficacy and minimize the resistance there. And then the last piece of that is to evaluate to make sure those antibiotics are working like we think we are, they were. And then that, that really is a cycle. It's not a one, two, three. We, we should always go back to can we find alternatives to using antibiotics. It's, it's a continuous improvement. Yep, absolutely. And, and it's a, a cycle that you're, you're, you're making adjustments in your management, you know, shelter, nutrition, uh, preventative medicine, vaccines, all those yep. things, working through a total herd health program with the veterinarian which then comes back to, to decreased antibiotic usage. Yep, and you mentioned earlier about bringing new technologies. You know, that is the veterinarian's job, or one of his roles in the VCPR is to bring in new technologies. And, and these things change all the time, and so non-antibiotic alternatives are kind of a, an area of research that's pretty hot right now. So if that's one of our goals is to minimize use of antibiotics, that's, that's a very ro strong role for the veterinarian. Cool. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. And remember, when you're talking about antibiotics, you can't manage with a bottle. There's no silver bullet. It's up to you and animal husbandry. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Lubers and I do here at the vet school, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. You've been watching Doc Talk today. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission, 
The Soybean Checkoff, Progress, powered by Kansas Farmers. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.